Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to have a look at this piece of equipment here, which is a loop impedance tester. And as you can see, it's a fairly old one, and it's not the sort of thing you would normally use these days for various reasons which we'll go into. And uh, this particular one is made by Claire, and it's somewhat unusual in that it's actually a neutral earth impedance tester, rather than the more usual one you use today, which uh, checks between line and earth. Now here's the thing, and it's in this fairly substantial wooden box, and uh, the lid actually just removed on these pins here, so you can see the instructions here in the lid. And if you want to read these, then I've actually put a link in the description to this video, where you can actually just uh, download this and uh, read it rather than trying to get it on the screen there. But uh, as far as I say, this is just stuck in the lid here. It's uh, obviously been typed out by somebody on an actual typewriter, and uh, someone's obviously amended one of the words here because somebody made a mistake. But uh, anyhow, it's the lid there, so uh, that just removes. And then inside, we've got the actual thing itself. So there's controls there. Comes with this plug here on the lead that's attached, and that's where you would uh, basically plug into a socket outlet to uh, actually power the thing, and also, of course, do the actual testing as well. Got a hole in here which uh, inexplicably has one of these round pin plugs in there. This, of course, is unrelated to this piece of equipment, so not clear what that's doing in there at all. And this was probably going to be used for an additional test lead, probably for the earth connection here, which we'll uh, have a look at the instructions later. And on the front of the thing itself, we've got uh, four sockets to the top here, which are marked ELCB test, which is for testing those older type earth leakage circuit breakers. And uh, that would be the voltage operated variety. A two up fuse, a neutral link, and an earth link. And these can be unremoved and plugged in other places as necessary. Two indicators here which are white and red, and it actually says white and red underneath for those that didn't know the difference. A meter there with the various readings. And at the bottom, forward and reverse, a uh, dial here to set to the appropriate voltage, and the uh, press to read or press to test button. So this is a neutral earth loop tester, model V233. Claire, as a company, doesn't exist anymore. But uh, when they did, they made a whole series of test equipment, all of which was primarily in this kind of wooden case style. And this one says something unusual in it's a neutral earth loop tester, which, as it suggests, tests the uh, impedance between neutral and earth. And this is of the type that actually uh, injects a current into the loop there. And then you better get a reading on the scale here in ohms directly. So essentially, it's putting a voltage there, and it's actually then measuring the current which flows. And this is a test which you wouldn't normally do these days, mainly because the new equipment, of course, is a line earth loop tester, or in some cases, a line neutral one. And for those, of course, you've got the mains power there already. And with those, it's normally the case you're just applying a fixed resistance across that and measuring the voltage drop. But uh, this one, uh, say, somewhat more unusual. And at the top here, we can see this top section is, of course, separate and uh, marked ELCV test, and someone's actually coloured over the thing there, which would have had a uh, model number or part number for that. And uh, you'll see there, but uh, some kind of number is concealed underneath that. Now, we're not going to be plugging this in, so uh, we'll undo it and see what's inside. So I'll just remove the various screws here on the front panel. So all of this would be fitted in from the front. The wooden case would have been made separately. And of course, all this stuff then fitted into it afterwards. And this particular case, or this style, was actually used for several other models in the same range. So essentially, it's a common uh, size of case. And then they've just fitted in whatever piece of equipment were appropriate at the time. So just removed all of the uh, screws there. And then these things should just lift out of here. So at the top here, it's got the uh, plate there. I see it's just got those terminals on the back with wires just soldered onto those tags. And so it's just a sort of paxlin or some kind of uh, plastic material. And then the bottom piece here again, this should just lift out. So there are going to be a fair number of wires connected to the back of this. So. Uh, Okay, so I just remove some uh, screws on the back there, which basically hold the whole assembly in because the wires are rather short. So uh, basically just the wooden case there, nothing really to see in that. So this is the inside here, 
And uh, the front panel here has just got those uh, single sockets on there, just four of those. Uh, so you've just got those sort of screw type things on the back with the wires just soldered on to those various tags. And uh, most of the wires from this just go to this large transformer at the top here. And this will be what will provide the voltage to place between neutral and earth. And uh, a couple of other wires just going off down to the bottom there. I've got this uh, kind of spring arrangement here, which is fixed between the two tabs on the side of the transformer there. These bits here are just uh, post where the front panel screws into position. And then in the middle here, I've actually got a relay. It's only got a magnetic coil or coils at the bottom there. And it's just a set of contact on the top here. So when this is uh, energized, it will switch the uh, contacts here between uh, connected and unconnected. And at the bottom here, I've just got this terminal strip with uh, various resistors attached to that and what appears to be a uh, capacitor in the middle there. And so a few of these are not actually used, but uh, so that's just a standard terminal strip there. Also something uh, wires can directly go underneath there and come out of the bottom. And then the other part here is the front panel, which essentially has the mains lead coming in at the top here, obviously the meter in the center, and then the various uh, switches and adjustments at the bottom. And again, another set of terminals things over this side. And again, that's just the back of the fuse holder. So here's a look at the side of the transformer. Again, a couple of uh, connections at the bottom here. And again, two at the top where we've got this uh, spring or coil type thing attached across there. And then on the top there, the main sort of winding is coming out of the center there. I was going over to that plate. Don't nothing much on the other side. You can just see the uh, laminated core there. With the various uh, sheets uh, stacked up there and obviously clamped together fixed together there and so the blue wrapping is just covering over the coil in the middle and then in the middle here we've got this little relay or actually it's got a large relay so essentially we've got a winding in the middle there which will be uh, magnetized when power is applied that will pull in this piece at the end here and you can see that then activates the contacts at the top in the center there so close that position and of course open in that position and uh, connection-wise to that, we've just got those coming on at the uh, over the side here. So that'll be the two contacts going through, of course, to the pins at the end there. And if you have a look at the bottom here, you can see where the actual wires go into the coil there, which is used to actually activate the contacts at the end. So basically it's just a large coil of wire, which of course attracts the uh, piece at the end when power is applied. And this terminal strip at the bottom here, again various uh, resistors on here. This is obviously a high power ceramic or wire wound variety there. What appears to be a uh, capacitor in the middle. Don't see anything on that apart from uh, UK made. Now this is a bit difficult to see, but the capacitor in the middle there so is a 16 microfarad at 275 volts. Can't really see much else on the wiring other than it's uh, UK made with the uh, some numbers on the front there, but uh, definitely a capacitor in there. And these pieces at the end here would appear to be some kind of diode from the symbol that's actually printed on there. So you've got the sort of little diode symbol printed in red there. So I've got two of those uh, basically common together in the center. And then if you have a look underneath this board, see in here there's a uh, another device stacked in the middle there now I'm not totally clear what that's going to be but it's possibly a uh, another rectifier or a diode essentially possibly of the uh, selenium variety and it's got the stacked plates and things there and again that's the only other thing on that side and there's some of the wire connections that come through and obviously the wires going off to different parts of the equipment this is the back of the main front panel there. And so you've got the mains lead coming in here, three cores there. So the earth wire, the green, is just going straight over to the green post at the bottom there. And the neutral, which is the black, again, goes straight over to that neutral post here. So that's basically your neutral and earth connections. And that little loop sorted to connect through the other parts of the equipment. And then the line, which is the red one, Come straight over to the fuse holder and of course that's the two amp fuse there and then you've got the wire coming off down to the rest of the equipment 
And that's again pretty much what you expect. So if the fuse blows, it disconnects the entire thing from the power. A meter in the middle here. And at the bottom, we've just got the switch there, which looks to be a changeover type, or at least it's got three terminals there. The piece in the middle is that adjustable uh, dial for the setting the voltage. And then the bottom here, we've got that forward and reverse switch, which according to the instructions basically changes the polarity, as it's apparent that this thing uses its DC to actually do the test, so we can use it in either of the two polarities there. And the fact it uses DC is also because we've also got that uh, rectifier in the bottom of the other board here. Of course, that's where that's uh, being generated from, and no doubt a probably a capacitor for smoothing that. So in terms of those uh, two links on the front here, we've got the neutral and the earth one. It is literally just from the mains lead on the lower connections there. And then by default, they're just basically connecting back to the two top terminals. So you've got your earth there, which actually goes across to one of the relay contacts. And then the neutral here, which is that blue one, which comes down to the bottom here. And going to the uh, resistor and other components on the bottom board there. And according to the instructions, you can actually move the black neutral one here onto one or more of these terminals here. And essentially it's selecting the voltage to test the earth leakage circuit breaker at. And again that makes sense because you've got your neutral there which is either directly connected there or you can just connect it one of these which of course goes to the various taps of the transformer to select the various different voltages that are applied. Now this piece here which is this sort of spring wound kind of thing is actually referred to in the instructions here and we can see here the uh, note here it says series resistor spiral springs clear to open circuit when overheated and must be resoldered to the top tag and this is obviously what this is referring to so presumably it's some kind of resistance wire that uh, obviously when uh, the current is applied to it excessively for an extended period this will heat up and presumably melt the uh, solder tag at the bottom and therefore cause it to go open circuit so a fairly crude method of uh, preventing it overheating. So not the sort of uh, arrangement you'd use these days, but I presume it does work reasonably well. Because bearing in mind this is only designed for intermittent use, it's uh, intended that you would uh, attach it to the circuit. And then on the front panel here you've got your press to read button. So we simply press the button, see what it reads here, and then release. Certainly not intended to be uh, pressed and held down for any length of time. Now the operation of this thing is uh, fairly straightforward. So you're going to put this into a socket outlet. So you've got your uh, line, earth, and neutral connections. So line is just basically providing you the power to actually power the thing itself. And of course your neutral and earth is where you're actually doing the test between, leaving the two uh, plugs in as uh, pointed out there. And then the uh, indicators here, the white and the red, are basically to show whether you've got the correct connection here. And the supply is actually what you'd expect. So white should be on indicating that the thing is working properly and then if red is on it indicates a fault either the fact that you've got a reverse between uh, line and neutral or the uh, earth is actually missing in which case that would either be brightly illuminated or dimly illuminated and then you uh, set the little pointer here until the needle actually goes up to the full scale point over the side there so you're basically setting the zero on that and at the same time you can actually read off the supply voltage from the scale that's marked around the pointer. So you've got from sort of just under 200 up to uh, 260. And again, uh, when this was manufactured your UK voltage would have been the region of the 240 there. And other than that then it's just a question of pressing the uh, test press to read button. And then the pointer will move from here down to some point along this scale which will give you the actual impedance of the neutral earth loop. And then the green segments here are intended to show whether it's in the correct kind of impedance range for these ratings of fuses. So you've got 15 amps, 30, 60 and 100. So depending on which value fuse you were using on the particular circuit or whatever, then it would expect it to see within the green band as appropriate. And as we saw in the previous video, the higher the rating of the fuse or protective device, then the lower the impedance needs to be so that in the event of a fault, the current that flows is sufficient to cause the fuse to blow within the required time. And then the orange bit here actually says here OK for PME or nearby substation. So again that's the TNCS type of thing. 
connected to it, it has a lower impedance anyway. And again, if you're right next to the main transformer or something, it's going to be lower, simply the fact that there's less uh, length of wires between you and the transformer itself. And once you've done that, you've got this forward and reverse, which is basically just changing the polarity of the test current. And bearing in mind, this uses DC as the test current, so just putting it in reverse, then you uh, test again, and then you're just taking the average of the two readings. And again, you have to work that out yourself, so uh, a bit of uh, maths required there. And if you're uh, doing the test and it doesn't actually reach the green zone, so it's sort of way over here somewhere, then of course it's going to have to fit one of these uh, earth leakage circuit breakers. And that's really where this uh, top part comes in. This will be the old voltage operated types, typically used on TT supplies, where the uh, earth impedance is going to be far too high to cause any fuse to blow. And as I saw in the previous video, in uh, the case of a fault ground, then you can actually get only just a few amps flowing, far less than even the rating of the fuse, never mind causing it to blow in a certain amount of time. And the sockets here basically are just selecting the voltage at which we're going to be testing the earth leakage circuit breaker. And uh, it's a question of the uh, black jumper here, which you're basically taking out and then just putting into one of the marked sockets there. So, for example, you would take it out of here and then connect it between, say, N and 30 to use the uh, 30 volts or 40 volts uh, alternatively. And then the other thing it just mentioned on the instructions there is that you can actually uh, connect your earth electrode directly to one of these terminals. And that will then place the voltage directly on the coil of this device. So again, you could uh, test that in either the 30 or the 40 volt socket. So let's look there at that loop tester. And say so fairly unusually, it's between neutral and earth, a test which you wouldn't normally do these days as there's not really any point. All the modern ones, of course, do it between line and earth. And they can also be used between line and neutral as well. And of course, also between uh, two lines if you happen to have more than one phase installed. But uh, of course, this was uh, fairly common at the time. And although it's uh, fairly old, it would probably still work. Now, we're not going to be plugging in and testing it for several reasons. The first of which is that uh, all modern circuits have RCDs on them. And if you plug something like this in an attempt to test it, then all that's going to happen is the RCD is going to trip straight away because obviously you're shoving uh, an imbalance of current through there in far in excess of the 30 milliamps of any modern RCD. So you can only test it on a uh, socket outlet circuit that does not have an RCD. And we don't happen to have any of those around here anyway. And of course, in 99% uh, of buildings these days, it's going to be an RCD on that. And the other reason as well is that that uh, old capacitor in there may or may not still be in functional order. And that uh, selenium rectifier thing underneath probably won't be either. When those tend to go wrong, they tend to give off large amount of toxic gases and possibly cause damage to the rest of it. And uh, while it looks to be in decent condition, we'll uh, attempt to keep it like that. But uh, yeah, fairly uh, interesting item. And say so you can get uh, others in this sort of range, which uh, did uh, other tests as well. But this one uh, pretty much only does a single thing. And bearing in mind, this would have been a fairly expensive piece of equipment at the time. Hand assembled, of course, and made in England. But uh, anyway, until next time, thanks for watching.